My name is Skyler Dacey. I'm an outside sales engineer with AAP Automation. And today we're gonna to demonstrate some of the safety capabilities of ABB's ACS 880 VFD in conjunction with an FSO functional safety module. We've installed this in option slot two. And today we're focusing on two of the setups you can use with this FSO module. First is SSE, Safe Stop Emergency. And the second is SLS, Safely Limited Speed. Both of these can attain a SIL-3 or PoE rating without an encoder or feedback device. So let's get into the Drive Composer Pro side and show you how to set it up. So now I am connected to the Drive in Drive Composer. It's important to note that you will need the Pro version of Drive Composer to access the safety settings. You will not be able to do this in Drive Composer Entry. Click on the Drive, open the safety settings. And the first thing I need to do is read settings from Drive, and you need to do this even if this is your first time accessing the FSO, um, just to, to make sure that the PC and the FSO are communicating. Default password is 12345678. So I'll click OK, and then it's going to download. So now that I've downloaded the active settings from the Drive, you'll notice we do have an STO safe torque off fault. This is to prevent the motor from starting while I'm changing safety settings. First step, I'm going to come into SSE, Safe Stop Emergency, get that configured. Restart delay after STO will set that to zero milliseconds. Time to zero speed with STO and mod off. I'm going to set that to a thousand milliseconds. This is an estimate of the time you think it will take for your system to come to zero speed when the STO contacts open. And then I have this triggered based on redundant safety inputs from an e-stop. And these are both inputs on the FSO module. You can see over here on the right side, a diagram of the inputs that I'm actively using. And when these inputs both trigger, STO contacts open, this is gonna ramp down. Once I hit zero speed, I'm gonna send an output to the PLC so the PLC knows we're at zero speed. And I'm doing that with output X1137. Uh, and this is again, all without an encoder. So we have Guaranteed safe stop without an encoder and the drive in the FSO module is able to verify the motor is at zero speed before sending a safe state signal to the PLC. So now we'll set up the safely limited speed. You see that I do have four options here. I'm only going to use one for this demo. Open this dialog box. SER speed scaling, this is gonna be the maximum speed of my motor, so I'm setting that to 1500 RPM. SCR1 ramp time to zero. This is that same estimate of how long you think it's going to take your drive to essentially slow down to a zero delta between the limit speed and then the safely limited speed time delay. This is the time at which the drive will trip if the VFD is not able to get the motor below this SLS1 trip limit positive. So in this case, if I'm at 1500 RPMs and the safe limited speed is triggered, the drive has two seconds to get this motor down to 1100 RPMs, otherwise it'll throw up a trip. Um, and likewise, if I am starting up the drive and I have SLS1 enabled, it's going to maintain speed between this band here. So negative 800 RPM to 950 RPM. Even if I'm commanding at 1500 RPM, the drive is not going to let the motor go above this 950 RPM until I disable that SLS. And for this, I'm using an input on the drive 1142, and that's gonna be the enable disable trigger for safely limited speed. So now I've got SSE and SLS1 configured. I wanna make sure I do have this toggle set to on. And now I'm going to apply these settings to the drive, again, using that same default password, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Click okay, and then this is going to take this configuration and it's going to look at what's in the drive. It's going to download it and then it's going to say, it's going to give you this dialog box that says that those two configurations are identical. This is sort of a last safety check to verify that what you have in your safety setup matches what's in the drive. You'll acknowledge that. It'll continue the download and then this will be logged in. You'll have these safety parameters saved to your drive. So let's go back to the drive and we can show you how this works. So now we've got the safety settings downloaded to the drive and we've got two screens here. On the left, you can see the drive itself and on the right, we have speed feedback from the drive just so you can see what's happening in real time. I'm gonna turn the drive on, get the motor spinning and I'm controlling the speed with a potentiometer here. Um, and this is scaled from zero to 1500 RPM. So you'll notice if I 
turn this down, the speed goes down. If I turn it up, the speed goes up. I'm gonna send it 1500 RPMs. Um, and as this accelerates, you'll notice that it's gonna cap out at 1100 RPM. That's because we have safely limited speed one active. So it's at 1100 RPM now. I'm gonna turn off safely limited speed. And now the drive is gonna accelerate the motor up to 1500 RPM. So it's gonna to continue to climb up to whatever the limit is that we've set. I'll turn safely limited speed back on. Now the drive is trying to bring the motor back down to speed. And because we gave it that two second limit, if it's not able to get the motor under 1100 RPMs within that two second range, it throws up a fault. So we'll reset this. We'll do another demonstration to show what happens if it is able to get back down into that speed. So now we'll do another demonstration. We have the motor running at 1100 RPMs and this is gonna to be top speed while we have SLS one enabled. I'll disable that momentarily and the drive will accelerate the motor. We'll turn it back on and you'll notice that the drive brings the motor back down to that 1100 range. And because it was able to do so within that two second time limit, no fault was thrown. The last thing I want to demonstrate is the functionality of SSE Safe Stop Emergency. So we have the drive running, it's going to be accelerating up to that 1100 RPM because we do have SLS engaged right now. I'll hit the E stop. This opens the STO contacts and then this light goes off. So this light is originally on to indicate that the motor is not in a safe state, that it's moving or capable of moving. When the STO contacts open and the drive sees that the motor is at zero speed, this indicator light goes off telling the PLC that the motor is in a safe state and that it can be operated upon or um, you know, a maintenance man can come in to fix whatever the issue was. So those are the two things we wanted to demonstrate, SSE and SLS. It's important to note that with all safety systems, it's recommended to have an expert design, install and verify the functionality of the system. This is not meant to be that, this is meant to be more of a cursory introduction on how to use the FSO 12 module. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, send them over to info at aapautomation.com.